What is that? Hmm. You know, uh, I think we're gonna have to change our plans for today. Because, to tell you the truth... Oh, 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 I, uh, <laughs> we... As I was saying, to tell you the truth, I had different plans for this episode, but... That seems very concerning. So, we should probably do something about it. And so, if I had to take a guess, I would say that that thing, whatever is going on over there, has something to do with these mysterious blocks. Now, you're probably thinking, Steve, why do you automatically assume that? You could be completely wrong. But allow me to argue my point. You see, that was not here before. Then, I collected these guys the other day, and now that is here. See where I'm getting at? So whether or not it actually is because of these guys, that's what we need to find out. So I'm going to suggest that we build ourselves some sort of research facility to uh, figure out what exactly is going on here. Now of course the first thing that we need is a silk touch hoe. So I figure let's just try our best with the enchantment table and kind of see what we can get. Aha, I have a Silk Touch book here. Perfect. Serious dedication. Yeah, it's not for farming, though. Well, I mean, it kind of is. Just, uh, not the type you're thinking of. When getting the block palette for this build, I realized that I kind of wanted to do this in a sort of steampunk era style. Which means for us, a lot of mining for some copper. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I found the amethyst geode from the first episode. I'm lost. So here we are at the massive copper vein that I found a couple episodes back. And uh, I know it's a massive copper vein because of uh, these raw ore blocks right here, which only spawn in the big copper veins. So we're gonna see if we can try and mine all of it. Alright, so I may have gotten a lot of copper, so what we gotta do now is, oh goodness, let it all smelt. Obviously just this is not going to cut it. There is a huge list of materials that we're gonna need in order for this to work. Starting off with mushroom stems. It doesn't look like much now, but this is just the base. It's time to do the rest. So obviously the building is looking pretty cool, pretty cool, but uh, there's a tiny little small, small, small issue. And that is, of course, there's literally no interior. <laughs> We're going to make a nice checker floor pattern here for our, our steampunk woe. How did I mess up that quickly? Right, so we've got ourselves sort of some outlines, if you will, of the basic uh, shape or a uh, basic idea we have here. Alright, so here's a little example of what I want to be doing when we're building up ourselves the interior for this steampunk research facility. I kind of want it to be more like the chaotic sort of random mess of little wires and pumps and steam things that, you know, only really the scientist of the lab actually knows what's going on in here. Um, it's not going to be me, by the way. <laughs> th 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 this is too com- this is too sciencey for me. This is too complicated. We'll- we'll get like, uh, I'm sure we'll get like, a uh, a good researcher from over in the village area. I'm sure one of them will for sure want to run this place. Yeah, we're gonna do something like this where you just got like the, the, the I don't know, steam pumps or whatever these are. Uh, just kind of 
all across, hanging over our heads, around on the floor, where we gotta like be careful not to trip over them, that sort of thing. We're gonna go with that, and we'll see. We'll see how it looks. Hey, we got the advancement wax on. So I kind of just want to like put wax on some of these oxidized copper blocks, just so like some of them are oxidized to give a little bit more detail. But, uh, I want most of them to just be like this. Well, guys, we have ourselves the interior here on the first floor. The only issue that I have right now at the moment is that these platforms have not fully oxidized yet. But, uh, that's gonna take a while. So, what I'm thinking we do while we wait is work on the downstairs area. And currently, there's not much down here. <laughs> First things first, we gotta figure out what we want to put right here. So I'm thinking we could come up with some sort of design, perhaps using these lights? Maybe? Interesting. Since we kind of have to come up with a floor design here, let's uh, figure something out. Alright, let's do a run through of this one last time. In here we have the interior of the upstairs area to our steampunk laboratory. We basically have a bunch of different little nooks and crannies of bookshelves with some barrels and just general storage and things. Then over here we've got ourselves our slime block launcher that leads all the way up onto these platforms. Uh, bad example. Onto these platforms right here where we can walk around. It's basically just here to take up some space on the ceiling and kind of make it look less bare. And uh, yeah, there's just a bunch of random stuff up here. There's a beehive, just for the sake of there being a beehive. Then uh, we've got ourselves some, some little areas right here. We're gonna put something back here. I don't know what yet, but that'll come at a later date. Then over here, we've got ourselves the Skulk uh, sensor, basically, um. I don't have any wax on me, we'll worry about that later. Here, here the scientists are kind of experimenting with skulk sensors and how they activate light sources. And then of course we've got ourselves um, the Enderman who appeared out of nowhere. I'm not gonna look at him, obviously. Yeah, we got this area as well, we got, you know, bookshelf, I'm gonna put a book there, it'll probably have some writing in it of some sort. And that's pretty much the upstairs area complete. Now you probably heard downstairs, we have ourselves a shrieker in a glass case, and we're kind of just looking at it, trying to figure out what exactly this thing does, what makes it tick. Then we've also got some experiments with waterlogged skulk sensors right here, as well as a fully free skulk sensor right on display. I genuinely don't know why there's so many endermen in here. I think it's because it's raining outside, but honestly I have no clue. We also have some barrels for some storage where we're putting all the different skulk blocks inside of and they also are used to launch us back up to the main floor. Also, we have ourselves a nice roof here with a nice glass dome protecting us from the rain outside. Now, obviously, it doesn't look like much, but this project has actually taken me, I think, six hours total or something like that? I think eight, technically, if you count the time that it took for me to design the entire thing and also collect the resources. So, you know, big project, yes, indeed it was. So I would really, really appreciate it if you guys- I did not look at that Enderman, don't worry about that. I, I would really appreciate it if you guys subscribe, because the, these projects, they take a long time, and, you know, I, I'm trying to make more higher quality uh, survival videos now. I know before I kind of just wanted to make it more chill and less edited, but currently I don't have much else to do, because Cloudus and P ended and I, you know, Anyway, I'm really good at doing outros on this uh, series here, as I'm sure you're aware if you've been a consistent viewer. Oh! There's, there's an exterior, exterior to do. do. Sorry that I'll have to wait till next episode. See you guys later. Bye!